even if I could get back in the Mind Flayer colony, which is unlikely in the extreme, I don't think I would have been able to save Zevlor at all, which is quite unfortunate. So, Zevlor, you tried your ding-dong best, but that's yet another tiefling lost to stupidity. Unfortunately for Zevlor, in this case, it's my stupidity and my blindness, my ignorance, my lack of ability to push buttons that blend in seamlessly to the environment. So, Zevlor, I will remember you fondly, but for right now, unfortunately, we all have to die. Everyone has to die in a giant ball of glorious fire, and that's that. Everyone dies. Everyone dies to giant fireballs. Welcome back, one and all, to the adventures of the greasiest forest gnome on this side of Faerun Charles D. We are back once more for Baldur's Gate 3. I have cleaned out the Shadow Curse lands. I have retraced my steps to every location that I have ever been to, and some locations that I have never been to, and I looted every container. And I do mean that quite literally. I have also increased the size of my looting screens, which makes everything way easier. All of these books I shall read, but if we look at this particular moss-covered chest that has 1,064 things within said chest, uh, if we look at it, it weighs an exact 25,000 pounds, which was completely unplanned. I have no idea how I nailed it so completely at 25 thousand pounds. If I open up the chest, you'll find I have 310 barrels, nearly 300 crates, and 129 wooden trunks. If you ask why I collect containers, I will not have an answer for you, but I have looted quite literally everything in Act 2, and I do quite literally mean everything. Everything, like I have this chest full of 790 esoteric things. Look at all of my daggers, clubs, um, about 300 pounds of rotten food, a lot of weapons, and so many things of clothing. Shields. I have uh, 87 plus 66 bones. I don't know why I have so many bones, but I needed to collect everything. I have about 30 buckets, three of which are filled with water, only five pairs of sandals, which is significantly less than I would have expected, but I also have about, like, 40 cauldrons, 20 crates that alone weigh 400 pounds. This particular box is about $25,000 worth of stuff, and it weighs 5,400 pounds. I looted quite literally everything, and over the course of my inane looting, I found the argument solver on a corpse. It solves arguments. I've also found, I went back into that Sharon thing and I stole the ritual dagger of Shar because we, we pissed her off and I'm like, I want that dagger so it does necrotic damage. We also found this covert cowl. I remember exactly where I got this. If you remember in the last light jail cell, there was an area that we never explored. It was a tiny shrine to Saluna, but there were some critters inside. I killed the critters and one of them had a cowl, which is interesting. We also got penumbral armor. I found this in a box in a place surrounded by shadows, so it's cool. It gives me stealth bonuses, which is cool. I also found a consecration ring. I don't remember where, but it gives me arcane radiance, so if I d deal damage to people that are illuminated, I inflict radiant orb. I don't know what radiant orb is. I also found a lot of books. I will be reading the books. So if you don't care for me reading about 22, 23 books, you can skip ahead to this timestamp. Future me, put in a timestamp. And then I also found a Zentrum shipping crate, and then we'll be taking a long rest, and then we'll be going to Baldur's Gate. So let me re read the books. Again, future me, one more time, the timestamp to when I'm done reading the books. I have a lot of books to read. The first book is a little gift. I will try and remember where I found all of these books, but I make no promises because, again, I looted the entirety of the Shadow Cursed Lands. Marcus, I assume no explanation is needed for just how rare these appendages are, and I trust you shall make good use of them. 
You have a golden opportunity to please the general. Do not squander it. Access to the unwilling donor has proven difficult since the harvesting, but if I am afforded the opportunity, I shall pass along your gratitude, Balthazar. Marcus, the Flaming Fist Marcus. Uh, this probably is in reference to the Flaming Fist guy with wings. He probably got the wings from Balthazar, I can only assume. This is unimportant. A swift and sudden death. A scorched book, its pages singed and tattered, though its contents have been rendered illegible by some unknown phenomenon, it is still possible to make out the dedication. To those who doubted me, may the storm claim your final breaths and the earth reject your rest. Okay, that is unimportant in the extreme. An open heresy. I feel like we've already read this at some point. Few recognize Shar as a goddess of creation or Saluna as a goddess of destruction, yet both are true. Bored in the primordial ebb and flow of time, they forged Ebir Torel together, and Shontea, Mother of Life, sprung... We've read this one before. I don't know why or how I remember that we've read this, but we've read this one. Uh, put selfish comforts over the fate of existence as being folly. For those who understand, the Lady of Loss is always listening. That is very true. I also found this book in particular, Grey Scout's Journal. It's apparently a quest item. I have no idea what it contains. We'll probably read that last. Attracting Drow Exiles. A lot of these books I found in various bookcases and libraries in Moonrise Towers, so probably a lot of it has to do with that. Dedicated to Sp Scribe Yanthus by General Ketherick. Sweeping up individual Drow renegades is not giving us the cut of the cadre of Lolf trained veterans I want for our staff and officer corps. We must be more ambitious. Agent Zilvery, True Soul 113, will be commanded to infiltrate Menzo Bezaran itself, ideally House Benray, ostensibly to pro, pro, proselytize on, ostensibly to beg on behalf of the Divine Absolute. I think Zilvery will be convincing in this role. This intrusion will excite out. Excite outrage? Incite? This intrusion will incite outrage among the Benray matrons, who can be counted upon to send a warband to exterminate whoever was so rash as to promote anti loth apo apostate in their home. Zilvray will have left a clear trail back here to Moonrise Towers, where the warband will not find a circle of ragtag heretics, but an army in the making. I will parlay with the drow leader, but as we negotiate, her warband will be ambushed, and every drow warrior we capture will be tadpoled. This accomplished, the warband leader will meet the same faith, and thus we shall acquire a cadre of hardened underdark warriors. And all of it will cost us is the life of loyal Agent Zilvery, but he is, truth be told, a tedious enthusiast, and I will not miss him. So this was Ketherick and Co.'s plan to get more drow. They wanted to infiltrate drow headquarters of Menzo Bezaran and, well, incite wars? or a war band, at least, to go and attack them so they can be like, I am going to ambush and put worms in your head. You are now mine. And that was, that was that. Beheading the Bitter Roots. The Grimforge region is an important choke point as it controls access to Moonrise Towers via the Underdark. But Grimforge is occupied by the Dwegar Bitterroot clan. Though not numerous, those Dwegar are a band of tough combatants and could prove inconvenient obstacles should we need to move military assets quickly through the region. These Dwegar must be neutralized. Accordingly, let a team of Orin's crack doppelganger assassins. Um, if I'm going to go up, I really, I really, really hope that once we get to Baldur's Gate and we track down Orin, I get to fight a bunch of doppelganger assassins addicted to crack. I feel like we should have a Sterion present for that particular fight. So yeah, they're going to be going and killing King Guerdon, the monarch of the Bitterroot clan. After the assassination, the team is to gather Guerdon's head, and especially his crown, before ensuring that both are hurled into the fathomless depths. The Bitterroots, unable to crown a new king, will fracture into a quarreling subclans, the leaders of which can be one by one tadpoled. This rifles Zrel on behalf of General Ketherick. So a lot of these missives are probably going to be Ketherick's plans on how to recruit a bunch of disparate clans and peoples. The Drows, the Dwegars, probably some other people. Dark Justiciers Plea. Shar, singer of eternal night, is this the glory you spoke of? I have journeyed through sheer darkness with once unerring faith as my guide. I have faced myself in mortal battle. I have been hunter and the hunted within your labyrinth of shadow. In these trials, I sought your favor, yet felt nothing but your contempt. 
I was promised the comfort of nothing, so why do I feel the torment of everything? In the final trial, I felt no triumph. The girl barely flinched as my blade pierced her flesh, yet her eyes betrayed her grief. How much torture had she endured? How many tears had she shed? What sort of man have I become that I would inflict such torture? What sort of goddess would demand it of me? And still, only silence. And in silence, I will have my answer. Right, I remember where I got this book. I found a skeleton in a chair in the library in the Gauntlet of Shar. And now that we have more context, he's definitely talking about uh, the Night Song, Dame Aelin. Hmm. Apparently, not all worshippers of Shar have the desire to slaughter an imprisoned woman. Garingoth's logbook. Right, I went back to the place with Garingoth, the woman in gold, and I found this logbook. I don't remember what this is about. This messy financial ledger records an import tax charged to merchants by the Wraithwind Tollhouse. The tax was clearly excessive and included gems and jewelry in addition to gold. Several notes are scribbled on the final page. Trade slowing. Merchants scared of Ketherick, nervous of war. He will not take my due. Well, thank you for that, Garingoth. You're too greedy, and you died. As you lived, covered in gold. Hymns for the Gone. A book of prayers to Kelimvor, judge of the dead. Someone has annotated it with the following. These are a little saccharine in, my, in places, but one or two of genuine merit as something more than religious doggerel. Something that actually evokes the complicated feelings of loss and hope for the departed. Their well-being, their eternal preservation in some paradise. So, uh, a skeptic of uh, the, the hymns for the gone. Hmm. These people, people probably take a, a grain of salt when it comes to a lot of the prayers for the dead. Investigation notes. The ledger is filled with tight, precise handwriting that seems to suggest a focused, analytical mind. A fresh lead has been volunteered by one of the guests in the dungeon. Praise Lady Shar for inspiring the inventor of thumbscrews. The guest spoke of an abandoned house, see map coordinates included, that was once said to belong to a potter, but is now being used as a clandestine place of worship for Salunite holdouts and their sympathizers. There is a chance, of course, that the guest offered up false information in a bid to end his suffering, but I suspect not. His confession has the ragged, unpolished air of truth to it. I shall endeavor to investigate at once, and cautiously. Best if I am not seen, and should I find any Salunite idols or texts, I can summon reinforcements and lay a trap. Oh, what a joy it shall be to see their faces when they are caught in the act and surrounded by dark cloaks. Verzin, Ranlock, Inquisitor to the Church of Lady Shar. So the notes of a torturer. I believe I found this in... Uh, along the riverbank, there was a house full of pottery, and I found this under a table, I think. Mason's Journal. I found this in the the, the, the stone carver, like the mason's place. The journal of a mason named Pid, punctuated by diagrams and calculations. Pid describes his work on a secret tunnel leading from the toll house to the basement, out to the exterior. The final entry takes on a sinister tone. Excavation's almost complete. I've devoted every drop of blood, every bead of sweat I have to this project, and for what? Garingoth's not yet dropped a single coin, but she's got no shortage of threatening stares. I should never have turned from the guild. Even if I begged to return, they'd be in their rights to refuse me. But I am not above asking, once the dust is cleared. A mason who got stiffed on the cost of a job. Missive from Ketherick. Gortash. The tone of your recent letter is inappropriate. You may follow the Lord of Tyranny, but I do not answer to him or to you. It isn't the fault of any of the Chosen that the artifact has gone astray. Unforeseen events occurred, as they always do. I acknowledge your planning mastery and brilliance of mind, but your lack of depth of expertise and experience that brings patience and composure. The artifact will be found. Our enemies will be thwarted, and we will prevail. Now, show us that you are reliable as well as brilliant, General Ketherick Thorm. So Gortash was probably getting on Ketherick's rear end about that missing artifact that is now firmly in our position. Necromantic Codexes, Their Enigmas. That sounds interesting, and I'm going to wait to read that until later. Ooh, a rebuttal from Gortash, potentially. Ketherick. 
Just a note to say that I was alarmed to learn that your strike teams have not yet recovered the artifact. Oh, this probably came before. The, the other letter was probably Catherick's rebuttal to this. The Githyanki appear to be after it as well. I'll have more to say about this when the time allows, but it's essential that your troops do not allow that object to slip between their fingers. Gortash. Which would make sense based on what we've read from this as a rebuttal rather than the initial thing. Observations on the Shadow Curse. I found this on a random skeleton in a place that I didn't actually go or record me going to. So I found a random skeleton and it had this. This field research on the Shadow Curse was quilled by a cleric of the God of the Morning Sun, Lathander. They were not particularly clever or insightful in their observations, but whatever nuance is lacking in interpretation is made up for in spades with determination. It seems with an eager and hopeful heart the cleric set out to reach the deepest part of the cursed area to conduct an analysis, though based on these blood-smeared pages near the book's end, you guess they did not get so far as they'd have liked. Poor, poor cleric of Lathander. On potions and elixirs, I don't know if this is going to be worth my time reading. Part 9 of the Basics of Alchemy series by Haxian Zephalophilus, a descaled dragonborn. Right, is there multiple parts to this series? Oh, right. I, this is his entire adventure. I have not been reading that in order. Okay, well, part nine. What could possibly go wrong? Today, I snapped at a good friend of mine in the Elf Song. I'm embarrassed about it now. Not then. This prickly mood had come over me because for the first time in ages, I was thinking hard about my condition. You know, being flayed alive and being a dragonborn with no scales. Ideas for elixirs came to me. It would have, It would have to be a very powerful elixir since they usually only last until the drinker sleeps. I mean, just make a potion that allows you to never need sleep. Potions are much more limited in their application, not long as, l not lasting as long. Though you can combine potions for simultaneous effects, whereas the digestive system can only handle one elixir at a time. I feel like I already read this one in particular. Lack of scales is giving me- we read this one before. Yeah, this just tells me that elixirs go into long rest. I read that book, that was a waste of my time. Orcs of the Trielta Hills, right, another- missive from Ketherick about how to record, record, recruit orcs, I suppose. The recent dismemberment of Agent Moss, True Soul 26, by Lord Herod's guards at the Ringfork stronghold is a clear indication that our strategy for co-opting the orcs of the Trielta Hills needs to be adjusted. Sending a herald to talk was regarded as evidence of weakness, so we must assume an attitude of dominance in our next attempt. The true soul among us who best understands orcish customs is undoubtedly Sir Yax of Scornobel. He he shall be sent, backed by a pair of ogres, to deliver a direct personal challenge to Lord Herod, using as an excuse the dismemberment of Moss. Yax is to defeat Herod and then force him to swear fealty to the Absolute, and in return we shall we shall back Herod in the conquest and alliance of the other two Trialta tribes. Inform Sir Yax as soon as he returns from the Werewoods. Disciple Zrel on behalf of General Ketherick. Out of the sausage tube and into the shadow. That sounds like a very interesting read. Shadow creature transformation is like this. I am standing in a tunnel with one way leading into light and the other leading into darkness. The tunnel glistens and stinks like a tube of rancid sausage. Everything's slick with slime. I've got to get out of here. I know I do. But which way? Light or dark? Not day and night. The light is coming from the face of my grandfather, who used to squeeze my knee under the dining table with his bony fingers. His wizened, grinning face is the face life wears. It has flayed off his face and is wearing it now, lantern bright in the light at the end of that tunnel. The dark, though, the dark is absolute. No faces there, no old family troubles there, no bad dreams or memories there. Well, well, that's decided then, isn't it? Sauntering now, striding now, running now into the velvety black, Embraced, bones snapping, body softening, silking, feeling the change. Old life left behind, new life, new me, let's go, yippee. I feel like this dude is probably one of the shadow vestiges that I have since erased from existence. Saluna's devotee. I, f I know I found this in the shrine under the prison. This diary records the life of John Medellin, he suffered from lycanthropy, becoming a werebear at the advent of the full moon. Cured of his condition by a priestess of Saluna, John Medellin exchanged his claws for a great sword and a cause. He would keep this priestess, her name was Erlona, safe from all trouble on the highways and byways. I have an immense desire to listen to Frank Sinatra. 
Further, he would bear witness, bear, because he was a werebearer, <laughs> he would bear witness to many of her miracles, for Erlona was a saint of the goddess and gifted even more than he could have imagined. They never fell in love, though their friendship was quite something. How cute. Sharon's Psalm. Psalm the Last. Mistress Shar spread her fut putrid flesh across the table before me. Eat of my bounty, she urged. She pressed her bitter mouth to my ear and her clawed hand to my loin. Take your pleasure, she whispered. Her tongue dipped poison into my mouth. Be quenched, she cried. The harpers, near victory, our fates are writ. Dark goddess, we partar partake as you're charged. On this great beast's flesh, let us feast. Our loins and lips, let us ravish. Of this poison, let us drink. If darkness we must know, let us be gorged, as it takes us. Yeah, I'm kind of really glad that we kind of got Shadowheart off of the route of, you know, Char worship. Because if she's gonna, you know, gorge her, her loins on corpses, that would probably not be good for Charles. Not in the long run, at the very least. The easy life. What to wear, what to say to your spouse, who to befriend, why are you working at your job, why do you care about taxes, what to cook, read, pay for, sell, you know, all of it, bullshit. Why is there no end to the bullshit? I have a secret for you. There is, brothers and sisters, there most certainly is. I used to be neck deep in bullshit, a shit buffet, an excrement parade, a crap storm of meaninglessness. All of those, you know, those little fucking decisions we have to make that aren't really there, that are basically devoid of purpose, in a shared community of thought and goal, like, say, a cult. Dirty, dirty word, I don't like it. But I had that, I had that decided for me, brothers and sisters. Every day is new and exciting with none of the choices mildewing in your noggin. People say cults are about conformity, I say they break it, I say they snap conformity's rotten, scrawny neck. I have no idea what this person was talking about, but the words a shit buffet, an excrement parade, and a crap storm of meaninglessness are now being firmly inserted into my vocabulary. I am going to find, I am going to intentionally carve out moments of my life where I can call things an excrement parade and a shit buffet because of that. This is probably the best book I think I've ever read or ever will read in Baldur's Gate. It is moments like this where I am extremely thankful for my ability to read words. The Price of Pride. A record of Kethrick Thorm's speech to his troops before his victory over the Druids and Harpers. Take this. You there, take this from me. That is gold, friends. Let those who are coveters and cravens among you take my gold and go. There's enough to keep you warm in winter. But in those cold and lonely winters to come, you will look into the bought flames and the purchased hearth and see a bargain for peace, and then you'll realize that such a retirement comes at the price of pride. Go on and take it, take it and go. Those who are not afraid, and me, we won't stop you. But nor shall we know a winter in which the coin of regret is idly spent. Instead we shall know blood and fury and a triumph worthy of a flame reconcilable only with heaven, I swear it. Against us arrayed is a group of fools. Let them be our bank vault. Let us raid them, friends. Let us grow rich on screams. Catherick is a very verbose individual and probably is quite competent when it comes to swaying the hearts of his believers. And it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt that he had tadpoles to help with the persuasion. The Rumor of Wraithwin. The Rumor of Wait Wraithwin, Author Unknown. Land of Darkness, Land of Gold, Land of Shar and Soldiers Bold. The Toll House Countless Riches Keep, Where Darkest Shadow Cursed Still Creeps. The Greatest Treasure of Them All Lurks Deep Within Sepulchre's Walls. Tomb of Thorm, O Veiled by Night, Reveal the Means of Kethrick's Might. Scribbled beneath the final verse. It's true, all of it. Oh, so this is probably a book about, you know, the rumors of the Shadow Curse in quite poetic form. And then someone came with this book and they're like, it's true, all of it's true, it's consumed by Shadow Curses, everything is terrible. And that is the third to last book, because we still need to read The Grey Scout's Journal and The Necromantic Codexes. We'll save the best for last. So let's read the quest book. Grey Scout's Journal. 
shitting near in his shitting scouting task. You, Dwegar, find another way through the shadow curse. Sure, right, shitting near. Whoever laid this curse knew their business a lot better than you do. What was that? Gnomes, gnomes, I killed you in the underdark. You can't be. <laughs> I found you or your way through the curse, shitting near. I thought that through the shadow curse is to let the curse go through you. Ha <laughs> ha. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I found this one on a corpse. I don't remember or have any recollection of what quest. This is important. But Nier apparently wanted to send a Dwegar through the Shadow Curse, and they probably died. Let's talk a lot so we can stop him from gaming. Do we or do we not want to get to Baldur's Gate? Do we or do we want to make active progress? Because I've been streaming for nearly 50 minutes, and I have not gotten out of this menu. We need to make progress. I I had the expectation that we would get distracted on the way to Baldur's Gate. We haven't even technically started on that, you know, way to Baldur's Gate. We're never going to get to the city. We're never going to get to the city at this rate. You guys cannot distract me. It's way too easy a thing to do. I need to read one last book and then we can sleep and then we can get to Baldur's Gate. Oh my god, this is... Oh, this, this, this entire series, this game will take about three years at this rate. Necromantic Codexes, their enigmas. Stamps in the end papers indicate this book was once part of the Library of High Heralds when they occupied Moonrise Towers. The librarian's summary reads as follows. Very old scholarly treatise about obscure necromantic tomes and codexes. Their mystic and arcane locks and how to unlock and decipher them. Ooh, I wonder if this has anything to do with uh, the necromancy of Thay. At the end, the librarian appended the following note. Urgent request from researcher Ilan Toth. That's the one, that's the dude with the necromancy of Thay book. He wanted to borrow this book officially denied. Stated casual interest in the notorious necromancy of Thay is a clear warning sign that his interest is anything but casual. In any event, this isn't even the book he wants. That's the Thorac... Thoraciate Codex. Oh, so he didn't even want the Necromancy of Thay. That was like a stepping stone to this Thoraciate Codex. Oh, that's a Necromancer book that I'm absolutely going to put my grubby little greasy little fingers all over. We're finally done reading all of the books. Oh my god, that's incredible. That is finally incredible i found this the zentherum shipping crate i will say i remember pretty distinctly i found this on the docks outside of moonrise towers i went into the prison and then there was that door in the prison that led out to the docks i found this on the docks just sitting out there and i have no idea what it is the only reason i didn't immediately put it into storage is because charles can inspect it and 9 out of 10 times in my experience, that leads to conversations. So, I shall inspect this. Is it going to... Do I have to leave the menu? Yes, I do. Your tadpole squirms and feels a legion of echoes in response. Oh, how lovely. Oh, how lovely. It's an entire barrel full of tadpoles for shipping, isn't it? Oh, they were probably using the Zentarum as like middlemen to spread their tadpoles across the world. Oh, this is a container of raw Sunny D. Oh, boy. Examine the seal. It looks familiar to you. Well, yeah, it's the Zentarum seal. Do I reach out tadpole to tadpole? I feel like that's a bad idea. I feel like that's a very bad idea. Let's examine the seal. Is it actually, you know, like... It properly sealed. The winged serpent of the Zentarim. It seems their pursuit of profit extends even here. Oh, how lovely. Um, well, Charles is quite smart, so reach out, tadpole to tadpole. Let's see how this goes. What could possibly go wrong connecting tadpole to tadpole? We, you never want to cross your tadpoles. We need to beat a 14, and we have no bonuses aside from our natural smarts. Charles, let's see it through. A 12. We just barely managed to beat this. Charles, you're going to need to do better rolls than that, hopefully. Let's hope this does not go wrong in some fundamental way. A pattern of blank minds newly born. They carry only a bare shred of memory inherited from something older. A sleep of centuries. 
the birth and destruction of a settlement above forming only background noise to the dream until something descended down into the darkness and the dreamer awoke. They probably have memories of the elder brain and the dreamer awaking is them it's not too late to stop the cult from using these getting things. the elder brain. Now's our chance to change them or fry them. Um, not sure how I feel about changing or frying them. I mean, I, f I feel like, what do we want to do? Why did, why did that cut out the conversation? Do we need to leave? Okay, hold on. Let me leave camp really quickly and have this conversation outside of camp because I might be messing with things. I, do we want to repurpose them? I don't know if we want to repurpose them or do something else with them. Here, inspect it again. Have another conversation. The vat is still, placid. Thousands of tadpoles happily awaiting their hosts. Um, okay, examine the, the seal. It's the Zentarim. the Zentarim. Okay, well, we can't, whoa, everything popping in. Oh, my computer does not like that. Probably should have had that conversation on the dock when it was supposed to happen. Okay, well, apparently we can't do anything. So it's going into the camp chest for an eternity. We're never going to do anything with it ever again. So let's put it firmly in the special loot opulent chest. This is my special loot chest where I contain such things as the spoon of saltiness and a chessboard and the fishing rod of alertness and a potion made of my blood as well as a, a dowry ring and an hourglass and Lucas and Fuzzy. Fuzzy deserves only to be stored into the most important of chests. So the tadpoles, you can also join um, preserved mind flare parasites, mother dearest, and of course our beloved Nutbuster. Let's put all of the books away as well because I no longer need to keep them in my inventory, which is fantastic. All of, uh, I'll put you somewhere else. All of you can go away. Actually, I'll keep the necromantic codexes because that might, it's probably not helpful. That can go away as well. Everything else, go in there. Oh my God, my inventory is finally clean. That is a miracle of miracles. I believe I put quest items in here, right? Yeah, so that can go in there. Fantabulastic. Now that we have read all of our books, I should also say that I redid everyone's equipment. So everyone is as up to date as possible. Asterion is looking good. Gale is clad entirely in blue and yellow, which is as ostentatious as Gale himself. But yeah, as you can see, I gave everyone better equipment and updated armor and accessories, and I even outfitted Jahira, Halson. Everyone is the max level that they can be. I leveled people up. Jahira loves to do dual wielding stabs, so I gave her Cacophony and the Incandescent Staff. So everyone is looking good and up to date according to my desires. So that is fine. Let us take a rest before we actually head out to Baldur's Gate and we'll get any last minute conversations in camp out of the way and we will make progress. Of course I have enough camp supplies. I literally have about 5,000 pounds worth of food. It's a miracle nothing has gone bad. Let's have one final conversation with everyone before we leave for whatever is coming next. Halson, how are you doing? Now that we're done. I swear I can already feel a change in the air. Like the curse itself knows its time is short. That is good, okay. We probably spoke to everyone already. You guys probably still want some hanky-panky time, which is fine. I will allow the moon lesbians to have their own fun. As long as Halson, and, and just be careful of uh, uh, Thaniel. He is probably pretty young and probably doesn't need to be exposed to that kind of stuff. So if, if I don't mind the hanky-panky, just, Cover yourselves with your wings if you're gonna do it around Thaniel. So, yeah. No one else, it looks like, wants to have a chat. I don't see any exclamation marks, and I I determine who wants to have a chat with us based on who has exclamation marks. So, I'm going to go to bed. Good night, everyone. Let's take a nap, because that that's the goal. Uh, auto select. Yeah, 40 out of 40. Full rest, let's go. Do we have any dream sequences? Wow, shock of all shocks. I don't think we have any dream sequences. Not a single dream sequence. Fantastic. I will gladly take that. 
Oh, people want to talk to us. Okay, well, before I forget, let's do all of our buffs. So we need speak with animals. Ah, Miku Sanima. Oh, Scratch. You want to have a chat? I'm glad I did animal talk. Scratch, come back here. Come here. Stop running away from me. Talk to me. The dog is unable to speak. Oh, what do you got this time? What do you got there, Scratch? In his mouth. It sounds like a bag of coin. Know. Maybe you can tell me. This is a torch. All I know is I thought of you when I saw it. It allows people to see in the dark. Pet Scratch. Oh, Pat Pat. Pet Pet. Pet Pet. Oh, he's a good boy. He was a good boy. Oh, we'd love to pet Scratch. That's just what we're all about. It's what we're all about. Such a good boy. I need to change my clothes. This is not this is not an appropriate attire for the current moment in time. I have got a torch. Uh right, I put them on the hot bar. So I can just go over here. I have the graceful cloth, the mighty cloth, and my robe of exquisite focus. So I can change my apparel quite easily. And give me the blood of Lathander, because that's my shiny mace. Nothing matters more than my shiny mace. And then my bow. Yeah, this outfit is way better for Charles. Uh Sh Shadowheart. Did did you do something with your hair? Do we did you borrow some of the dye? I mean, if you want to borrow some of the dye, I mean, typically we use it for clothes. I don't I did I, I had no idea you could use it to change your hair color. Or maybe you just use the magic mirror. Do, can we have a can we talk about it looks good on you? Be honest. What do you think of the new look? It looks good on you. Uh yeah, I'm I'm all for it. Well, I'm glad someone does. Perhaps I'll get used to it. I have a lot to get used to right now. Um, was th was there an impetus, or is this like a magical thing? Cause like I I'm I'm digging it. I I like the look. We might have to rethink the dyes for the armor because we might we might need like that white gold. Hmm, interesting. Inter. I like I like I I really do like the new look. Um. Should we talk about all that's happened to us? Is there anything new to, Fine. to tell? What's on your mind? How am I holding up in your estimations? How am I holding up in your estimations? No notes. You've exceeded my every expectation. Oh, that's... Considering I... what we've been through. Mm. I think I was very lucky to find such favorable company. And attractive company, too. No less. Oh, ho, 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 Shadowheart. You're gonna make me blush. Nice. Okay, cool. You are rocking that nice, shiny silver hair. Does anyone else want to have a chat? Will, you're good. Carlax, good. Everyone's good. Neat. Fantastic. Let's actually make some progress an hour into the stream. Let's leave camp and actually go to Baldur's Gate. Oh my god, I could get distracted by literally anything.